Good morning to each and every one of you. What a blessing it is to welcome you once again into the house of God, into fellowship of love. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again, Lord God, just saying thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for how you watched over us this morning. When we rose, oh God, we were yet clothed in our right mind. And Father, we just had to say thank you. And now, God, as we come together to worship you, we ask, Lord God, that you meet us, oh God, in the service. Bless the angel of this house, oh God, as she brings forth your word. We ask, O oh God, that you open the hearts and minds of your people. Let them be receptive to your word. And we'll be so ever careful to give you the praise, to give you the glory, and to give you the honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our hymn of praise today is We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. ladder. At this time now we're going to bring forth our pastor, Pastor Nervous as she brings forth the word of God. Thank you Elder Cheney. To God be the glory yes, yes. for the day, this day, 
that he has made. Want to shout out to our watching congregation, both here in El Paso and elsewhere. Want to say thank you to the men of fellowship for being such a blessing to the mothers of our church for Mother's Day and to the members that reached out and called me or sent me cards or brought me a gift. God bless you. I'm just so honored and so grateful to God for all that he is doing. Well, this is the third Sunday in May. And uh, I'm excited about this word today. So if you will, turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. I'm going to be reading two passages after Romans. The next scripture will be Hebrews 12 and 28. And uh, today I'm going to read it out of the NIV and the King James. All right, yes. Romans 12 and 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship, says the NIV. King James says it this way, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then turn to Hebrews 12 and 28. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, yes, yes. let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire, yes. says the NIV. Now let's listen and hear what it says in King James. Wherefore we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Lord God, we thank you for your word on today. We ask, oh God, that you would breathe on it. That the hearer would have ears to hear what the Spirit has to say today, oh God. God, we'll be forever grateful to you for all that you have done for all that you continue to do. And Lord God, yet for that we know that you're going to do. We give you glory and honor today. We worship your name. We bless you, God. We exalt you and we magnify you in this place. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Come on, even in front of your television, say amen. amen. Two months ago, our women's ministry was in the midst of planning uh, our, our first spring tea, we were inviting ladies from all over the city to come and fellowship with us. During that same period of time, we were planning for our church's 13th year anniversary. Yes, yes. No one could have predicted what was in the shadows waiting to be unleashed on the entire world. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 an unseen enemy, the president calls it. A disease that has killed thousands. Yes. I know, Elder Cheney, there are some that are saying God is punishing uh, people for this or for that. Mm -mm. But let me go on record today yes. and yes. say I don't believe that God sent this disease, but I do believe he allowed it. Yes. And I'm not going to debate today why. Our church went from a no online presence to being like a lot of other churches in the city, scrambling to figure out how to continue to do ministry. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God, everything we needed was in the house. Yes, yes. Uh, we had a drummer who had a gift for graphics and uh, who uh, knew how to navigate in the virtual world. In fact, he already had a business that was mainly in a virtual space. We had a secretary that was well 
capable and able to help us navigate setting up a YouTube channel. We had a treasurer that was able to assist and function with the new way of giving for our church, yeah. Cash App and Givelify. Mm -hmm. We had a music department that was flexible and a body of believers that were ready to not just come to church, come but be the church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does all this have to do with worship, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. In the first passage that I read for your hearing, it says we are to offer our body as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. It's our true and proper worship. Mm -hmm. But King James translates the original Greek word, latria, from service. Yes. It means that we are to offer our service. service. Yes. As believers in the Lord, we sacrifice our lives daily for his purpose and plan. Mm -hmm. We are taking up our cross every day yes. and trusting in the Lord to lead us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. You've heard it in Proverbs 3 and 5 where it says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean yes, not to thine own understanding but in all of your ways yes. acknowledge him uh -huh. and he will direct your path. Yes. And so that's what we want. We want God to give us the plan. We want God to give us the direction. We're taking up our cross every day and trusting that God will lead us in the right direction. Yes. Our continual sacrifice is an offering of service to him out of gratefulness for the things that he has done. Mm -hmm. Now, don't miss this. Your service All right, is an act of worship. Yeah, yeah. You can't say you love God and you're not willing to serve him. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my members reminded me on just yesterday that our actions have to line, have to line up with our words. Yeah. You can't tell me you love me and you won't call me and yeah. you won't check on me and see how I'm doing and uh -huh. every now and again maybe buy me a flower yeah. or a <laughs> box of candy, amen? Uh, you remember in the book of Acts, it's the second chapter in the 45th verse, where the church sold their possessions mm -hmm. and gave it to all who had a need. Yeah. Fellowship of Love was about to be that type of church. Mm -hmm. I will never forget, Neil, on our last in-person service, we made a list of some items families needed. We assigned persons to go and secure the items and bring them back to the church. Mm -hmm. And then we set up a time for families to come and get the items they needed. Yeah. When we found out the children were going to be out for an additional week, or so we thought, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we set up a snack food drive and blessed all our children with snacks that we hoped would last for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. I know there are some parents out there that said, no, Pastor, it barely made it a week. Our goal was for it to last for three weeks. Oh, my God. It did not stop there. Members began checking on members, dropping things off at their doorsteps, mm -hmm. offering to go shopping for them, yes. even preparing meals. We were serving each other, mm -hmm. and in doing so, worshiping God. Yes. Well, it's been two months, mm -hmm. and God has continued to bless our church. Yes. And I believe it's because we've learned how to serve him in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you that was my title? Worshiping in a pandemic? Yes. Matthew 25 and 35 says, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. Uh -huh. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And Jesus said, when you did this for one of them, the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it for me. Okay, pastor, okay, let me get this straight. The way we worship God during a pandemic is by serving him? Yes, yes, and yes. Yes. You may not be able to come to 40, 3800 Olympic, this building, but you can still get your praise on. Yes, yes. You can still get your worship on. Glory. And today, I'm letting you know that one of the ways you worship God is by serving. Yes. Mm -hmm. The second passage I read for your hearing, I love it because it says, we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That should give somebody some peace and hope today. Uh, it reminds me, Neil, 
syllable song I grew up hearing. Y'all know I grew up in an old Baptist church. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. So I'm glad and I'm thankful. Then it says to let us be thankful. Oh, there ought to be a whole lot of thankful folks out there today because God has seen fit to continue blessing you, yes. letting your days roll on. Every morning when you wake up and see the bright sunshine, you ought to thank God for another yes. day. Lord. I heard the songwriter say, it's another day's yes. journey, mm -hmm. and I'm glad about it. Yes. Amen. So there ought to be some thankful people. Mm -hmm. And so it says to serve God acceptably with reverence and awe. Now, don't get mad at me uh, that it says acceptably, which indicates that there is a service that's unacceptable. Yes. I believe in everything we do, Minister Tim, we should do it with a glad heart and a willing yes. spirit. Yes. Yes. If it's not in your heart to do it, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. In other words, don't do anything half-heartedly. Yes. Uh, my sister, Sister Anna Howe, she um, despises this word, that'll do. Mm. Uh, we should never have a that'll do attitude when uh -huh. it comes to the Lord. Yeah. Just a bare minimum, just to get by. No, we ought to want to do our best. Yeah. We ought to want to have it be, be the, the best, the excellence of God. We want people to see that mm -hmm. because we serve an excellent God. Uh, I remember when I was raising my sons, Elder Cheney, uh -huh. I would give them some chores to do, and they would halfway do them. And, you know, one mind would tell me, just forget it and go on and do it yourself. But then I said, I'm not letting those jokers outsmart me. <laughs> I'm going to make them do it until they get it right. That's it. That's it. And yeah. I think they are thankful now yeah. because they know how to wash. Mm -hmm. They know how to clean. Yes. And they know how to cook. Amen. Yes. And so isn't that just like our God? He gives us these pop quizzes and we mm -hmm. fail and he keeps making them to us take them until we get it right. Amen. Yes. But oh, how it blesses God when we finally mm -hmm. figure out what he wants us to do mm -hmm. and we don't mind serving him. Yes. Yes. God does not want us to do anything halfway. Mm -mm. In other words, don't be lukewarm. Jesus said in Revelations I, about our works, he said, I'd rather you not be, I'd rather you be hot or cold, yeah. but not lukewarm. Mm -mm. Whenever you are serving God, just know that you're worshiping God. Yes, yes. And the same goes for our giving. Mm -hmm. It's a form of worship. Yes, it is. Yeah. When we bless others and bless the house of God, we are worshiping. And Elder, I know this is one of your favorite scriptures. Jesus said in John 4 and 23, but the hour yes. is coming. Yes. And now is when, when the true worshipers yes. will worship the Father in spirit Amen. and in truth. Yes. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. How do we worship God during a pandemic? Yes. By serving and giving. Mm -hmm. I heard uh, one of my spiritual fathers, he said, you know, the worship leaders always get up and they say, where are the true worshipers? And you know, everybody's raising their hand because we know how to jump. We know how to shout. Yeah. And we know how to praise yeah. God. Yeah. But my question today is, do you know how to serve God? Yeah. The time is now and the place is wherever God leads you. And I praise God for him allowing me to be able to serve because I think about what the Hawkins family said. They said it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes, but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. And every day by your mercy, you'll keep on blessing me. So I have to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You see, we could be the one that need to be served, but God has so seen fit that we are able to serve somebody else. As I close, my good friend, 
friend of 60 years called the other night and she called to check on me and uh, we began talking and she told me, she said, Mose, I'm 67 years old and I just believe that I was created to do something more. Uh, I, I believe I am to help somebody, to serve somebody, but I just don't know what it is that I am to do. And one thing she likes to do, she likes to clean. So she said, you know what, I think I'm gonna offer some people to help them clean. Yeah. I wish she lived here uh, because I certainly would let her help me clean. Can I tell you, whatever your gift is, that's how you can serve God, by helping the people of God with the gift that God has given you. If you a good cook, bake up something, baby, and take it to somebody in need. If you can sew, why don't you make something? In fact, one of our, uh, they aren't members yet, but they're getting ready to join. Her daughter made me a face mask. Uh, she found some fabric with crosses on it. And I can't even tell you how much it blessed me that she would make some, that she, first of all, she would pick out the fabric just for me. And then that she would make the mask just for me. Hallelujah. It's time out for serving ourselves. God wants you to serve somebody else. And in doing so, you're worshiping him. How do you worship God in a pandemic? By serving. How do you worship God in a pandemic? By serving. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, oh God. And now, God, we give you glory and we give you honor. Thank you for your word on today, God. That reminds us that you've created us to serve, not to be served. You, Jesus came. He said, I came to be a blessing. I came to heal. I came to deliver. I came to set free. He didn't come for anything for himself, but he came for you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we bless you today. God, we thank you for your word. We pray, oh God, that someone listening, someone watching would be convicted. Lord, we know that we have to be socially distant, but God, we are creative people and we can find ways to serve one another. Uh, I've, I've been so blessed. People have left things on my door. At my door, I have a chair, Lord God, and they put stuff under the chair. They've left boxes on the porch. What a blessing. And so, Fellowship of Love, continue to serve God in a pandemic. Father, we thank you now for your word. We ask that you will continue to speak to your people. God, that you would give us strength, that you would endow us with power from on high, that we will remember to bless your name, that we remember to serve you and to serve the house in which we have been planning. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you have been blessed today, we'd love to hear from you at Fellowship of Love CC at yahoo.com. That's our email. Uh, if you do not have a church, we would love for you to send us an offering or your tithes. If you have a church, every week I tell you to send that to your church. And then you can send us an offering. We thank God for our church family who has been supporting the church from day one. Not just when the pandemic started, but from its very existence. And because of that, because of your faithfulness, we are doing wonderful. Now we never want to close without offering Christ. Maybe you heard this message and you're in need of service. You need something. I'm, I'm here to tell you that God is able to supply every need. But oh, how he wants to have a relationship with you. If you will confess Jesus as Lord, believe that he died for your sins, you can be saved today. We thank God for you. We bless you. If you want to mail, 
Your offering is 3800 Olympic Avenue, El Paso, Texas. We also have Give Them Five. It'll be on the screen. And I just want to thank our music department, Elder Cheney, for just being with us every week as we come into your homes. God bless you, and God keep you as our prayer.